Okay, so the observer. So the thing with the observer is uh, we're identifying um, what am I? So the classic thing is uh, what, what am I? So understand with the what am I question is I like to say how am I currently identifying? You know, how do I experience myself now? So in this moment, you know, what are the typical things that one can identify with? Is there any sense of body right now? Is there any sense of thoughts right now? Um, is there, oh, there could be something even more local than the body. Is there like a tight feeling somewhere in the body? Aches or pains? So those are the gross, usually the body and the thoughts or any sort of significant feelings in the body are the usual ones. However, um, there can be more subtle ones when those bigger ones have gone. So experience um, the experience right now. Is there any sense of body or thoughts or thinking? Usually the big one is thinking, but sometimes, or the next one is usually the body or feelings within the body. So whatever you, here's the thing, whatever you experience is what you're identifying with right now. Because experience only arises from identification. And identification, you could say on, on a certain level, identification occur, occurs if there is meaning or specialness in relationship to that which is being re registered. So one can only register what is meaningful. Um, and that which is not meaningful is not registered. Now understand that uh, if there is any experience of anything, what, what one knows is that all things that are experienced are, I'd like to call them object, uh, objects, you know, like a thought is like a, an object. So imagine a cloud passing by in the sky. The observer of the cloud is not the cloud. You know, the, there can be no clouds and then there's a cloud floating past and then the cloud's gone. But the observer is not the cloud. Now here's the confusion. If there's a cloud in front of you and, and you identify that you are the cloud, one can see that's the, that's the, um, that happens due to over-identification. There's a loss of that detached observing and then one becomes the, becomes the thoughts. Same with the body. You know, the, the body is um, if you like, it's similar to an object. You know, body. Ha is there a sense of height? Is there a sense of uh, location with the body? But then, those things are. Um, those things have a limited. They're, they're limited, you know. But what is it that observes the limitation? Can that which observes limitation be the limitation? Like, if one observes a cloud, is one a cloud, or is the observer? Say there's a, a small fluffy white cloud in the sky. Is that which is observing, are you a fluffy white cloud or are you the observer, the detached observing? So some people will say, I am that fluffy cloud, but actually the fluffy cloud has a shape. And that which is observing the shape cannot be the shape. So then you, you, then you go, there is always a layering of observing, which is observing that. And if that layering of observing vanishes, then one has too much identification. So hence, then you'd get people saying, I am the cloud. What about things that pass, like thoughts that come and go? So if, if, there, if there were like a series of clouds coming, going past, would you be any of, the, any of the clouds? Or are you just the observer that observes these clouds passing by? So with this, you start to realize that thoughts, there's a detached observing of thoughts, which is not thoughts, the body. There is a witnessing, or there's a detached observer of the body. If you're enmeshed with the body, I quite like to get, get the experience of how tall the body is, or you know, how wide the body is. But what's observing the limits of the body? Be the observing of the body. So next is, um, if something, if there's something here which is quite strong or persistent, it may be fluctuating. 
or it may be here now, but it wasn't here yesterday. Therefore, you know it's a thing that can come and go. Let's uh, talk about, say, anxiety. Let's take something like anxiety or depression. Well, there are, there are times when there's no depression. There have been days when there's no depression, no anxiety. Even if you've had anxiety for months, but you probably on occasion had a minute or a day with no anxiety. Or there might have been a year before when there was no anxiety, and the anxiety came when a sudden situation arose. So that which observes anxiety, that which observes anxiety when it's here and when it's not here, when it comes and when it goes, and that which observes anxiety even when it's here, can you be the observer of things like anxiety? Now, a lot of people have problems with things which are more diffuse, like anxiety or tiredness, or sort of woolly, uh, foggy things, I like to call them. But actually, that which observes tiredness or anxiety or depression uh, observes it when it's here, and it also is the observer is also here when it passes. So these are like anxiety and tiredness, the things that come and go before the observer. But the observer is not these things. So once you get that detached observing of these um, more non-local states, sometimes it's easier to get the observer of thoughts or the body. But if if there is a state here that's been here for a while that state often comes and goes, or it may come and go every few weeks or every few months. So that means there is an observer of it coming and going. Now the observer, when you're in the observer of, say, thoughts or the body, or, um, you know, you can also have the observer of time, or also have the observer of locality or location. So when you're in the, whatever observer you get to, does this observer have any quality? Is, are, you in a, are you in an observer which is enmeshed or identified? Like let's say you're the observer of thoughts. But is this observer interested in thoughts? If this observer is interested in thoughts, then there is an observer that's observing the interested observer. Okay, so one observer is watching thoughts, but there seems to be some interest in passing thoughts. So then go to the observer of the interested observer. So the observer of the interested observer, if this observer has no interest in the observer, then you'll find that uh, you know, the thoughts will disappear. Because when there's no interest, things disappear. This is, um, this is a thing that is uh, known, that things which aren't interesting aren't registered. You don't notice them. So you can only notice if there is something within consciousness that it wants to hook in an interest. So if you can go to the observer, if there's an observer which is slightly interested in it, then we'll go to the, the detached observer of the observer. And when you get to the observer that has no interest in whatever it is, it will disappear. Another fun one is noise. Go to the observer of sound. There is an observing of sound. And, then go, and if that observer is registering sound, then go to the observer of that observer, which has no interest in sound. There's the observer of time, sound. So all of these qualities, one, as you go deeper and deeper within, is there any qualities? Now remember, don't go to your head. Don't think about this. Because as soon as you're into thinking, then go to the observer of thoughts. And then you're in the observer of the body or the observer of time. You're going deeper and deeper within and let go of anything that you're hooking into. If there is something that's hooking in, if there's something that wants to pick up a thought, a feeling, the body, that can also be something that you can observe. What's, is there a field of interest in thoughts? What's observing the interest? Is there some aspect of consciousness that wants to hook in to anything? But what's observing that field that wants to hook in? So always go when you get to whatever observer you can, is there an observer that's observing that observer? And in that observer, is there any sense of limitations? And then if there is a sense of limitation, what's observing that? Ultimately, if you get into oneness or silence or pure infinite stillness, then that's the end. You know, you're there. So, we'll now spend a few minutes just being in the observer.